Okay, this is Mr. Blank speaking, and uh, I'm going to show you a tutorial about um, how to apply textures. Okay, you're going to be applying textures of some sort to your um, self portraits, whether it's on the surface of your face or in the background to create some sort of mood, some sort of statement. Um, in addition to applying textures um, using layer masks, I'm going to also show you how to. Uh, apply feathering techniques because sometimes you want change to be a little gradual as opposed to having hard edges in your effects okay so I'm going to show you uh, a tutorial of how to work with a portrait in this situation it's going to be the rock here okay and if I turn off this layer um, how you can apply textures to the surface of his face to uh, make a statement, okay? Um, perhaps I should have chosen a, uh, a rock wall or a, uh, you know, basically a uh, stone stone wall, <clears throat> but the bricks um, have a nice feel to them. And uh, as I go through this particular PSD, it's like I chose to create a specific mask just for his face and then one for his neck and I'll show you how to apply um, um, uh, the warping tool to uh, make it more round and make it more spacious to the object it's wrapping around. Okay, I'm also going to show you how to apply. Um, there's a slight glow here, and that's created by um, the feathering of the layer mask. Okay, and uh, just to show a little variety and show a little uh, person personal flair to it I uh, created this uh, kind of pastel -y f um, design to it okay now obviously for your um, images you're going to be um, going along with the um, the uh, personal feeling you have for the subject matter okay some some of you gentlemen are doing it about um, a sport that you enjoy and that you um, really focus on um, some of you gentlemen are, are, are going to capture a mood okay we already filled out those templates but um, I'm just going to show you the technical <clears throat> ways of approaching the art all right so let me just close this save it and I will close the rock here all right and let me show you what I want you gentlemen to do for this exercise okay I'm going to forward this in um, your student samples, your sample media, and I've supplied images for you, so you don't have to go hunting around. But I threw Jim Brady in here, the same image I used of the rock. I threw Samuel Jackson. I threw in Will Ferrell. Okay, these are all high-quality images um, with interesting portraits, um, with some nice. Uh, I made sure they had some sort of a highlight with lighting and things, just so you can uh, experiment and try to match that lighting. Okay nice things with his hair here and just an expression all right and uh, here's textures um, why not why not a basketball um, a brick um, some kind of grungy almost like a mold in an old basement kind of texture okay and I want your gears to be turning of how you can capture um, uh, photography of textures whether they're in your house or on your uh, walk home from school, um, anything that you would encounter. Okay, here's a stone wall. And I think for my demonstration, I'm going to do something a little different to get me entertained. And I'm going to apply a stone wall to uh, the rock. All right, because he is the rock, so why not a stone wall? Um, so I'm going to apply this texture to his face this time as opposed to the bricks, like I showed you in the example. All right. So let me find Dwayne Johnson here, and I'm going to put my left finger on control, and I'm going to open with, oh, let me try that again. Open with Photoshop, Photoshop CC, that's what you gentlemen have. All right, so there he is. And I'll also open uh, the stones. And let's see, test for Mac exercise. Textures. And I'll grab those stone stone wall. He's the rock. Alright, so I have two images open in Photoshop, the rock and the stone wall. 
All right, the first thing I want to do is create my masks, okay? And I'll be looking for your masks in your imagery, okay? So I'll say rock. All right, I'm going to create the pink that we're so used to working with. And apply, um, I'm going to create a new layer. New layer, and I'm going to call it pink. And I'm going to fill that in with the bucket tool. Okay, so there's a layer of pink. Here's the rock. And I'm going to start creating another duplicate layer. I control clicked. Uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Okay, I'm going to select the image I want to duplicate. Go to duplicate layer. Say OK. And let me see. Let me change the name of that. I'm going to just click on, click on the name to change it. Come on, work with me. Uh, is there a rename option? Rename, rename, rename. All right, let me click in here. There we go. Um, I just double clicked into the name itself and I'll just call this uh, Rock 2. All right, so I'm going to do my surgery here. I'm going to create my shapes. I'm going to select this file and I'm going to fill, this, fill the screen. And I'm going to hit the mask option on this particular layer. And I'm going to turn this off for the moment. I'll put the pink layer underneath my image. And I'm going to select the rock. And I'm going to delete the rock. I'm going to hit delete on the mask. All right. You know what? I went too fast there. Let me see. Let me toss this. Although I was successful, I'm going to lose that, OK? What I did is I applied a mask. I hit Command All to select the whole screen with the mask, not the picture, but the mask. And I put my right finger and hit Delete. All right, now I'm going to turn on the top rock here, and I'm going to turn down his opacity. All right, now we're going to make two masks, one for his head and one for his neck. All right, because I really want to separate the two. Because when I apply the textures, I want to make them look like they wrap around his neck and then wrap around his head. Two separate entities, two separate shapes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the background to my advantage. I'm going to uh, hit Command D to deselect. Command D deselects all the pixels and I'm going to click on my mask and I'm going to click on the background. Let's see, 25 tolerance is pretty good for this task. Not too shabby, okay? Some funky things are over here. But by holding down my left finger on shift, grabbing the marquee tool, I can select these pixels that were not selected. All right, and something funky with the edge here on him. I'm going to be a little... Uh, precise here. I'm going to select the inverse, which is going to be the rock here, and I'm going to grab that polygonal lasso tool. And if I put my left finger on shift, I can complete that shape. All right. And this is just me being kind of a perfectionist, but hey, why not? Okay. So, and just for the heck of it, I'm just going to grab the edge here and select the edge here. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to create a mask of things that I want to keep. So I'm going to um, select this area of the rock, but I'm going to select inverse. Oh no, no, I want to select this. My bad. And I'm just going to hit delete. Oh, going to reverse these colors and hit delete. All right. So now I have him separated. Okay, I kind of didn't need the guide here. All right. So now I have a mask associated to the rock here. All right. Now I'm going to create two duplicates of this. And I'll tell you why. Because. I'm going to duplicate this layer with the mask. And I'm going to call this particular rock layer uh, rock 
head. And I'm going to call this one. I'm just going to try to double click on there. Rock neck. All right. I know this is more advanced. Uh, bear with me here. Okay. So now that I have him separated here from the background, I'm going to, um, let's see. I'm going to make the rock head here. I'm going to turn off the neck for a moment. What I want to do is select the mask, not the imagery, but the mask. And I'm going to, um, let's see, put my left finger on command and click the mask. And now I'm going to try to get rid of all this area around his neck and add it to the background. I know, this isn't, let's see. And if I just show you, perhaps that'll make more sense. So what I want to do is I currently have my selection to the mask here. And now, let's see. Let me hit Command D and deselect. Click on the mask. Grab a brush. Um, grab a nice solid br brush, not a goofy one that we're used to. And I'm going to separate. Okay, I'm just going to lose his head here. Alright. And I'm going to erase everything that isn't him. Now notice how I have um, that's, oh boy. Oh, I don't have it turned on. I'm going to try to erase a spot here that shouldn't be here. Alright. I'm going to turn off the neck again and I'm going to keep going with this head. Sorry for the distraction folks. And let's see. And what I can do is I can actually select to make shapes. I use this elliptical marquee tool a lot. And what I'd like to use it for is by creating putting my finger on shift in creating circles, I find myself selecting a lot of things in circles. Okay, a lot of natural things are created with circles. So if I keep my finger on shift, I can kind of select his face and grab his ear here, and then grab everything else. Okay, and then I can just select the inverse, and then put and then tap delete. Oh, let's see. Actually, select inverse again, so I didn't even have to. S ah. Let's see. Okay, I want to get rid of the things that are on the outside. So if I grab an eraser, I can. It's allowing me to select. Okay. Select inverse, and now I can get rid of this content. Do I have to reverse these? I have to reverse these. Okay. And I probably need a, be a better brush for this. So I'm going to erase his, what is not his neck. And then I'm going to hit Command D and deselect. All right, so I have his head as one object. Now I'm going to turn on the neck, the rock neck, and I'll turn off the head for now. And what I want to do is just separate and just show his neck. So I'm going to select the um, mask again. And if I just select his face and just work at the shapes once again with these with the elliptical marquee tool I can delete all these shapes and then I can make bigger select bigger shapes delete that okay and there we go and then I can probably select all this black, Command D, 
I can probably select all this black just with the magic brush, the magic wand tool. All right, Command D. Grab the eraser just to clean this so it specs up. Okay, and let's see. So all I have is head. Let's see what the deal is with this little speck here. It's driving me crazy, as you can tell. Hmm. Now what I did is I looks like a let's see. Looks like I need to bring that little piece back, and I think it's part of his actual face, not his butt, not his neck. So I'm going to turn off the, and I have to leave that on. I'm going to grab the rock um, mask of the head, and I'm going to create a shape so that I can scrape in. that part that does not have any pigment. So I'll grab a brush and I'll bring that in. Maybe I'll just lower that shape again because I see a little slice there. And I'm going to paint some more. All right, now I'm gonna deselect, Command D. And now I have what I want selected. I have the head and I have the neck. All right, now, I don't need the pink anymore. I'm going to delete that. Now maybe I'll keep that. Yeah, yeah I'll keep that because I might change that to another color. In fact, maybe I'll make it another color now. I'm going to make it a nice dark maroon. All right. That's just more, you know, since I don't need the cleanup factor anymore, I can, that's more appealing to me. All right. So I have these two um, working for me. So I'm going to save that. Save my work, save as, I'll call it uh, my last name. Call it rock texture. Yeah. Feel free to call yours, your last name, Feral texture or Samuel L texture. All right. So Let's see, now I'm going to look for my textures. Now, the, for the original one I did the brick, remember? Um, but for this one, I'm gonna use the stone wall. Remember how I opened this up? So I'm going to bring this over and I'm just going to drag it over 